Armando Hasurugan Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. Here you can also like and ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things such as artworks. Please. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one, such as 720, I guess, for better graphics. And in this video, we're going to talk about antibody somatic VDJ or VDJ recombination. And this is going to be part one. And so antibody somatic recombination occurs in B cells. And going back to the B cell development, we begin with a progenitor lymphoid cell, which through somatic recombination, also known as VDJ recombination, will make an immature B cell with a unique antibody that binds to a specific antigen. But this in itself is a very simple uh, diagram. It's actually a bit more complicated in that first, the progenitor lymphoid cell can uh, become a progenitor T cell, or in this case, what we're actually looking at is that the progenitor lymphoid cell can become a progenitor B cell. And once it becomes a progenitor B cell, it will go through somatic recombination of the heavy chain. So there's heavy chain rearrangement. Typically, the progenitor B cell will make an immunoglobulin M antibody. And so this pre, uh, progenitor B cell will become a precursor B cell after somatic recombination of the heavy chain. When it becomes a precursor B cell, the precursor B cell will then undergo uh, another somatic recombination, but this time of the light chain, so light chain rearrangement, to become a immature B cell. So as you can see, there are two somatic recombinations occurring, one in the heavy chain and two in the light chain. So let's go back to where the progenitor B cell will undergo its first somatic recombination. So here we have the DNA of the germline, so germline DNA of the progenitor cell. And in this germline DNA of different types of chromosomes, we have uh, some genes for the heavy chain. So remember, somatic recombination first involves the heavy chain. And in the heavy chain gene, the heavy chain gene will essentially make the heavy chain of the antibody, if you don't remember. And this is the heavy chain of the antibody. Now going back to the heavy chain gene, we will look at the overall picture of the VDJ recombination, which involves the VDJ segments. In reality, there are many V segments, many D segments, many J segments, but we'll only look at one to understand the process here. So in the heavy chain gene, we have a leader segment, we have a V segment known as the variable region, so the variable region, and we have the D segment, the diversity segment, we have the J segment, the joining segment, and we have the constant region. On the heavy chain gene, the constant region is known as constant mu, which will essentially make the antibody for immunoglobulin M. And now this is in the DNA. And the DNA contains introns, obviously. So a point to make is that the J and C region are in close proximity. However, the variable region and the diversity region are far away from each other. So the first process that occurs is that we have J and D recombination in the heavy chain. J and D recombination is where the J will bind to the D region, or the D segment, to bring C in close proximity. Next we have VDJ recombination, where the D and the G segment will bind to the variable region. So bringing the C, the constant mu, in close proximity with everything else. Now the constant mu here I have drawn a bit bigger because a constant mu actually consists of many segments. For immunoglobulin M, there are four constant regions because the heavy chain consists of four constant regions. Following VDJ recombination, this will actually produce um, transcribed for an RNA. So this whole uh, sequence now of VDJ and constant is an RNA. And because it's an RNA, we still have introns. And from splicing, this will remove the introns within that particular gene. And then once the introns are removed, it will become mRNA, which will then make protein. And now this is essentially the protein for the heavy chain of the antibody. Unfortunately, the D and J regions I'm drawing here in orange and green are drawn incorrectly. They're supposed to be on the other side, on the opposite side. But that's just a minor error. 
Anyway, this antibody is essentially this IgM antibody we find in this immature B cell. But how about the light chains? Because we don't have the light chains yet. Well, after the heavy chain recombination has occurred, we get a precursor B cell. And in the precursor B cell, we have a gene for the light chain. And so the light chain gene can undergo somatic recombination, VJ recombination. So in the precursor B cell, we have the light chain gene. Now the light chain gene is different to the heavy chain gene in that the light chain gene does not contain a D region. So we still have the variable segment, the joining region segment, and the constant segment. But we don't have the diversity segments. We, are, we of course have introns in this gene because it's the DNA. And remember, we, it's still the same. The joining region and the constant region are in close proximity, but the variable region is far away. Now what first happens is we have the J and V recombination where the joining region and the variable region bind together to bring the constant region in close proximity. And essentially after this it gets transcribed to make RNA, which we have here, with a poly-A tail. Now this RNA with the V and J bound together and the C in close proximity will then undergo splicing, the removal of the introns, simple enough. And so now we are left with an mRNA with the leader V, J and C regions which will essentially make the protein. And so as we've seen, the light chain gene has made a light chain protein, which will make the, this particular antibody. So the light chain fits this antibody, V and C regions, with the joining region here. Now, as I've mentioned, we, are, we don't only have one variable region, in, even in the light chain, one joining region or one constant region. There is actually many V regions, many joining regions, many diversity regions. And so all this mixing up between the V, D, and J will make a unique antibody. Not only that, during somatic recombination, new nucleotides can also be added to increase the diversity and specificity of these antibodies. So I hope you understood this first part of the video. Second part, we'll look more deeper into somatic recombination, V, D, J recombination. Thank you.